Back with another public service announcement. 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 So look, I've sat out on a super Mr. Maya back with another public service announcement. Of course, Mr. Maya in the spot. Michaela, how are we doing this What's morning? Up? We are doing just fine. How are you doing? Listen, Tahira, how's it been cheating on these tests? Tahira, bra, I'm telling <laughs> you the flack I'm getting from people. As yeah. if it's Michaela. I'm like, guys, it's a series. Come now. Listen, so now we, we have to not just touch on a little bit. This is the first time humans are on the PSA podcast. Yes. Obviously, if you're doing your rounds, I've been seeing you. Uh, you know, doing your PR and all that stuff. So just a little bit of the background. You acting, when did it start for you? Yo, um, it started for me as like young as six years old. Okay. Yeah. Why? In my grandparents' living room, doing like little shows. Because back in the day, I was actually a very big theater girly. I used to watch like District Six. Yes, hundred um, percent. You know what I mean? And Cutting the Kings, all David Graham and Tali Peterson. Same, same, same. My Loved favorite. It. So I really fell in love with theater from then. And then I would take like excerpts from those pieces and do like little skits for my family. Your own ones. Okay. Yeah. In the living room with my cousins. Oh, so we have some of that. Like recorded. Yo, I wish I we, did, man. None of it recorded. I have none of it. Yes. It's sad, so, my video. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's when started. Six years old. I mean, growing up where? In Bala, all, born and all life? Yes, all my life. Bala, mm. girly, represent. I love ah, Bala. Oh. People say it has its negative connotations, but I love it. It's where I was born. Listen, you get nice, but you got a nice side of Bala, and you get the. You do. From every single place, I think. So. Every area. I'm sure you're from the nice side. I'm from Old Bala. <laughs> which is, it's a bit of a better side, but okay. I mean, Bala is Bala, you know Bala, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now, obviously now, so I mean, so before Blood and Water, yes. were you on, was there anything else that you were doing? Yes, there was quite a few things that mm. I was doing before then. I mean, there were like small Afrikaans things I was doing okay. back then. So actually, I worked on the series called Dance, which Dance. was yes, a I never actually Afrikaans watched it, yeah. drama series that I did with Dylan back in the day. In yes. 2017, with the same production company that did Blood and Water. Mm. So that was a good few years before then. And from there, I just started to do a lot of other like little local things, like Dispirius, Decentrum. So a lot of... SABC three sort of Afrikaans things. Yeah. Also, mm. I see on your TikTok, you 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 dancing quite often, eh? Yeah. I see you always shaking it loose. <laughs> I'm telling you. I think what a lot of people don't know is that I'm actually as I have my South African colors in hip hop dancing. So okay. I'm a professional dancer, and I've Just been doing so you it know, for yeah. the longest time since I was ten years old. So now, listen, listen. Now, why is there why is there no scene of you dancing in the series? Listen, I think I feel I like they should. I feel like there should have been a thing where you all made a TikTok. This is actually a question I'm getting, yes. but I don't think that Taira can dance, man. You know why what I mean? Not? The type of character she is. Nah, she's a little too like reserved and conservative and a nerdy girl. So yeah, yeah I can't put dancing and Taira together. Listen, any similarities between you and your character at all? Yeah, there's a lot. Um, I think like we are actually both introverted. I'm very much an introvert. Okay. I'm very timid. I'm. I can be. Shy. I can be shy and socially <laughs> yeah. awkward at times, so a lot of that integrity also she holds a lot of integrity, yes. and those are values that are of like very, very much my core. Mm. Um, yeah, there's a lot that I can relate to with Taira. Listen, and then obviously now with playing that character, people actually assume you are Muslim. Yes, I'm so, actually Christian. Yes, so, <laughs> I'm not. Like, let's make it something clear. I'm not Muslim. I'm yes. Christian. Yeah. Now I'm ready, like Taira, getting ready for Ramadan as well. I mean, you know, she fasting. I know also you now. are. Tomorrow is the day. I have to. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So now with playing, with playing that character, now I don't want to give too much teases away yes. in case no one even watched the. Exactly. Watch this kind Guys, of if you haven't watched it, what are you doing with yeah, your life, bro. please, man? Like, when it came out, like, bro, I have to watch it because I watched it since it came out. I was, like, I was just yeah. happy that there's a South African yes. series of high school, mm -hmm. high school kids. I don't think we've had something like this before. Exactly, right? that's true. And like the quality, you know what I mean? And the caliber of like just like the excellence that it operates with. I think that's something different that we haven't had in South Africa prior to Blood and Water. I mean, there was Queen Sono, which was actually yes. also flipping amazing. And then Blood and Water came. And then I just think that South African film just took it to another level since then. No, I said, like, I mean, I feel like right now, I think we're on like on a very, very international level yeah, in terms of all class. of the stuff that the people are kind of coming out of South Africa right now. 100%. Tell us about the process again, like when you guys were actually doing this thing. How mm -hmm. long did this take this final season when did you actually shoot it oh my word I think we actually started shooting in April last year okay and this was a quick one because we actually shot it within a three month process and okay. that's very short for film but we tried to shoot like episodes in like a weeks or s rather um, like yeah episode one episode two episode three like that in weeks so it was a very fast process okay um, 
we didn't get as much time as what we did in prior seasons. Right, but also, yeah. we've been doing this for a long time, so by now you would think that we would know what to do, and that's the reason for like the speed up of everything. You know oh, what I mean? I got you. Listen, anything, yeah. that, anything that happened, like let's say, uh, like like off camera that people don't see in terms of like I mean, you guys getting ready and stuff. Like, what are some what are some of the processes that people don't see about to like this is the end product? You know oh, what I mean? Oh my word! I think you don't see us waking up at like three in the morning yes. and like I have like Gucci bags under my eyes. Maybe okay. Like pick up time is like four a.m. and then we drive. Driving to like Stellenbosch, just long road, and then we get to sit, and then we in our chops because obviously we just came from doing it the previous night. Yes. Um, and then so this is the the procedure, right? You get into your trailers, and then you get called for your hair, makeup, wardrobe, and then in between those things, like us as the cast, we find like fun things to do, like we'll be clopping the music in the trailers, okay, and singing, Lika. and yeah. like just getting the day ready. You know, started like on a good note. Um, yeah, and then we go back to our trailers and then ready for our call time for whatever time that might be. But then what you don't know is that sometimes we are only on the fifth scene of the day, but we're there at 4 a.m. Oh, so you still have to be there regardless? Regardless. Okay. Because the schedule can change at any time. So the, the director might decide to like flip the schedule and be like, okay, actually, Tahira's on for the first scene. Let's so do this one now. Okay. So, yeah, sometimes you're there for hours, guys, chilling and waiting. And, and already taking scenes waiting. like a couple of times. Yeah, exactly. But are, there, are there some stuff that they haven't used that, I mean, like, just, yeah, actually, I feel like there's also, like, in every single movie or series, there's always, like, parts, like, okay, we, we would have used this, but wait, never mind. Yeah, like, sometimes, you know, we go through the script read-throughs and you read everything and you're like, okay, this is what's going to happen. And then, at the end of the day, some scenes have to get cut because maybe time was limited or we okay. didn't make our pages, you know what I mean, as the director, they didn't get to go through everything or we did film something but it wasn't maybe as relevant to okay. the season and then they would pull that specific scene I out. got you I got yeah. you so look judging on it now, I mean, again I mean I've watched everything yeah <laughs> from season 1 to season 4 I'm done with season 4 as well to do support you know? <laughs> nah, I'm support. I, <laughs> I love, love South, I love South Africa now, I like I said form in, in, in all aspects and then also now with that I mean what, did, what is your take on the final season without giving too much away Okay, I have mixed emotions yeah. about the final season because I think... Is it the final, by the way? I'm not sure. That's okay. up to Netflix to decide. Yeah. At the end of the day, we can only hope and think and have our own opinion, but Netflix decides. Okay. So whether it is or isn't, um, I have mixed emotions and mixed reviews about the season. I think it was excellent. I think the quality remains the same. I actually think the quality is even better than previous seasons yes, in terms is. of like just cinematography and the yeah. camera and just everything. Storyline, however, um, I think we've also got gotten a lot of like mixed reviews from fans because people are like obviously OGs and true Blood and Water supporters, yes. and they're gonna just be like, yes, Blood and Water, this and that, and like that's what they stand on. But then other people are just gonna be like, okay, but there were certain things that I didn't really feel linked to the original story. Original line, story, you yes. Know what I mean, so I think for those who haven't watched it yet, you might also feel that way. Like, how is this? I feel like a watch it and decide for yourself. Yes, I agree tell with us. you. In fact, comment on this YouTube video when you see it. We want to know you about it, yeah. your honest opinion. Raw, honest opinion. Yeah. And I mean, what's it like working with some of the like, let's say your co your coworkers or staff or let's say everyone else, my colleagues, <laughs> colleagues. You know, How's it, I mean, what's the what's your what's your relationship of um off off camera? Yeah. yeah. So actually, we have a very very tight bond. We are like a very close knit family. So okay. obviously, in season one, we were like testing the waters, getting to know, you know each other. There but were certain people that were really like crazy stars you know what I mean yes. like millions of followers and then we just didn't know but from season two onwards like you the bond just became crazy everyone grew so tight mm. and um, I have a very special and close relationship with Dylan for instance as well yes. as Leroy Dylan who plays Wade and Leroy who plays Sam uh, we're all from Cape Town so we would hang out uh, after hours as well and like go quad biking or just go for lunch or catch up yeah. do fun things together man so the others are they I mean are they all in Joburg Durban we're there majority of the actors actually from uh, Joburg from Joburg yeah, yeah. Okay. and now a lot are from Cape Town for instance myself uh, Leroy Dylan Gretli and Arnu yes Megan as well we're all from Cape Town and then the rest is from Joburg so all of them flew down to film this this but it was season. cool the time you had like this whole like synergy of like the two cities, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we live in Cape Town, you know, it's always been like Cape Town, Germany, yeah. Cape Town, Germany. Yeah. But to have that like together on the same platform was quite, I it's think it was quite. It's a beautiful quiet. thing. I love it. Like, and I would hope that I can also go there and then I would be welcomed with the same sort of like, you know what I mean? Love and energy. Love yeah. and energy, man. It's and such what was a it like shooting up here though? 
it's beautiful. Honestly, like this city is crazy. We mm. know how amazing it is. And I mean, international people get to see that it's not just lions and elephants and stuff that roam yes. around. You know what I mean? Oh. Like we have like skyscrapers and the ocean and the mountain and the vineyards and Alice, just everything. Um, so I think it's it's really a blessing to be Funny shooting up here. I mean, you, you say that I, mean, I have some friends that are living in Atlanta, I mean, uh, yeah. Texas as well. Oh, wow. And, they, and they're convinced that, that that's, 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 that's like what mainstream that's media crazy. tells us. Obviously, when they go Google South Africa, they always show in the fucking, uh, but like, what do you call this? Wildlife <laughs> reserve box that I think all of Cape Townians have not even been to themselves. Exactly. Like, like when last have you seen a fucking giraffe? My bro, yo. <laughs> it's 2024. Please. Like, um, international people, get with the program. Oh, as a bleep man. Five. When last have you seen any of them? I've, okay, I've actually been to the Lion and Safari Park in Joburg. How long uh, ago? That's almost there was like maybe three years ago. And that was like, South Africa. And before that, like 10 years. Ten, so. Look, I can't remember the last time I've seen a fucking lion in no, there. No, man. You need to no, make no, a trip now. That's a bleep. So now, so now, with this, is there any things that people like, like things that happen? Uh, again, like I said, off form that people don't see off cam. Um, mm. In terms of like fun, funny moments, like do you have? Is there any? Is there any? So, or so is it the, the, that's why I'm, for me, when we try to find the picture, my thought is like more like, is it a serious environment or is it like? No, guys, it's a, on it's a it's a damn joke on okay. set. Like we have the funniest people. Like there are three guys that are duck funny and that are the entertainment for okay. our lives. That is. Dylan, Arnu, and um, Tabang, who plays KB. Yes. They are absolute damn clowns. Like, there's not one day that goes by where Arnu's just, like, dancing and, like, like doing the same things. Yeah. And, and, like, making jokes constantly. So, the environment is so relaxed. It's so fun. And we just have a blast on set, literally always. So, that's why it's never, like, a drag to come to set. Because okay. we know it's going to be a flippin' brilliant day because of those guys. So, now, talking about that, now, in terms of... We, move, we, we, go, we went down the, the list of like the series, I mean, mm. season one, season two. Yeah. Season, so is, is the season four writer the same person who wrote season one? No, so they are different okay. writers. So as you will notice, every season has different writers and they also have different directors. Okay. So this season, we had three totally different directors to all our past directors. One of our directors from this season um, was actually in um, season four she played the therapist in the very beginning she's okay. an amazing director yes. Nozipo and then another one of our directors uh, Zen Van Sel, he was actually the um, DOP in a previous season so he was the cameraman yes. you know what I mean and so now okay so they, so they give like people different exactly. opportunities and chances like there's you always try. room for growth okay, cool. and, but that's what I love about Gambit as well it's like mm. very much family orientated and then they really do push for you and open up doors for you mm. yeah so that's it's amazing. Talking about that, has it opened up more doors for you in terms of outside outside of the the series and like film thing? Like, um, have you gotten any more contracts or people was like, hey, can you do this? Can you promote this? Can you? Like, you know, the I, influencer I stuff, I definitely think man. so, yeah. I think on the influencer side, yeah, it's definitely opened up um, yes. influencer work because all of a sudden now it's like this other dynamic. You know, I'm not just an actress now. Now there's like campaigns and Hi, things. guys. Welcome. This is oh, my word. New. Oh, my yeah. God. Hi, guys. Like, what do you mean? Hi, oh, guys. my God. So you want to see money? Actually, I hate that, eh? Like, oh, I... You get ready with me also? I mean, no, but like... No, not really. But I will that's do a thing now. Is it it a is a thing, yeah. yeah. I will do like one, but like I'll try to keep it as like raw and authentic as possible. Okay. Because I don't like like to put on this false pretense and this false narrative of what it should look like. Like yes. if I'm in my gown and my ears, like uh, Demata, yeah. then that's that's who I am and that's what it is. So yeah, but it has opened up those doors and yeah. also obviously international jobs and things. I'm actually working on an international job right now. It's an American docudrama series. Um, so that's really really exciting. I think coming up in a few months. That's so quiet. Yeah. I mean, and, and is your passion, your passion is still definitely here in, in acting. 100%. Look, I'm a dancer, I'm a singer, yeah. I am an actress, um, I paint as well. There's like so many things I do on the okay, creative so this, spectrum. That was, that was my next question. That okay. The stuff that we don't know. Yeah, so all of those things. I love cooking also and baking, so I can cook up a, a, a storm for you. Okay. So a liquor, a liquor Louis, curry. What, what is it? What do you want? A liquor prune curry. Prune curry? <laughs> milli brood. What is milli brood? Well, Cornbread. Bro. I've never okay. made that before. Now but that will be an attempt. I don't know if you saw the episode with Dylan and I also asked him to sing. But now, no, so, don't lie. Did you actually? I, I actually asked him to sing. What did he? What is he? Guy was fly me to the moon. He, he said, lying? "Fly me to the moon." Yes, that's what he did. Yeah. So now it's your turn. What must I sing? Whatever you oh, want. You don't have to do the whole thing. Even okay. if it's thirty seconds, even if it's twenty seconds. We just want to hear now. 
Guys, please. Um, can I do the same one and then we put it next to each, o- each other? Dylan's one and my one. Fly me to the moon. Okay, we do fly me to the moon. Guys, listen here. This, this clip is going to TikTok. Please, yeah, right here. Need- and listen here. If you're going to grill her, that's, that's on her. Okay, I need Go a beat. A- so, a- I'll do I'm a click. Not the guy, Louis. Give us a beat. Fly me to the moon and let me play amongst the stars. Hey, let me see what spring is like on Jupiter or Mars. Yes, listen. Listen. Tell her if you're watching this episode, I'm sorry, bro. She wants this one. Can I just say though that you beat? This one. That beat was speeding up and slowing down. No, no, did you saw the rapping in there also as well? I thought so. Yeah, no, that's your part. That's your part. <laughs> You would know Lickham and so now listen here. So I mean obviously this is what you do as well. Yeah. So is there any character that you've got to play where you've got to express more of who you actually are? Yeah, so actually in Arden's play there was a character I played and her name was Dominique Victor. Okay. She's actually a painter in the series. And um it's so funny because I always say that my dad on Blood and Water, um, he's my love interest in Arden's play. So my friends are always How like when, when he yeah. came up in the season, my friends are like, Oh daddy, daddy's here <laughs> daddy, and it's so freaking weird. Huh? But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the weirdest <laughs> thing. Because like he's my father here and then I have to go into Arden's play and then I have to have this different type of chemistry and then I'm then, all of a sudden so like weird, yeah. someone in my thirties, you know yeah. what I mean? And then I'm a seventeen year old and then someone in my thirties. And it's just a crazy dynamic. But um Dominique Victor is like, oh my word, I love her so much because she paints and she's yes. very like she's assertive, she's independent, she knows who she is. She's sort of neither here nor there. She's a bit of a free spirit. Uh, she loves to travel. Um she can't be like reeled in or by anyone or told. So what kind to of do. Like who you actually are. So a lot of this yes. is who I am. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm a very complex human being. I've got you. Yeah. Up. By the way, super random question. What's your star sign here? Libra. I'm a Libra, Libra girlie. Okay, so yeah. And your date of birth is? 8th of October. And which year? 1992. 1992. That oh. makes me 32. You're turning 32. How you feel about 30, 32 this year? I love it, man. I feel like our generation just looks younger and younger, and mm. like they're doing the most and they're living their lives and they're healing from all of their past things and they're just trying to just be better and do better. Talking about that, are there any, 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 any traumas of yours that you've had to grow through? Oh, my word. There's so much. Like, firstly, I come from a uh, divorced, like, Parents, Same, go on. so yeah, <laughs> raised by two, two. oh cool, oh, <laughs> that's one with you, gang, this one. gang. Yeah. So yeah, so raised by a single mother okay. with a brother as well that worked really hard. It was very difficult um, being raised in that environment. You know what yes. I mean? Um, it wasn't always easy. Obviously, I've witnessed some things. So there's a lot that I've had to overcome in the past, and also a lot of that was blocked out because of the trauma yeah. that I've dealt with. So. And yeah, so from there, it was just life and my perspective and outlook on life was different to the norm, normal person, as you can. No, also, 100%. Like, no, the reason, and I mean, I, I randomly kind of popped into this thing because this is a conversation yeah. with my, myself and my friends and even just like people like who come to the podcast and all this, we have this conversation yeah. about traumas because I feel like some people don't understand that the way they operate sometimes operating from a place of, exactly. of pain or trauma or maybe it's your, it's your actual response mm. to how you've I've been able to deal with something 100% yeah. been able to deal yeah. with something because um, look healing is, is a process right? it's, it's not it just happen like yeah. okay I know what's wrong it's with me downs, yeah. Yeah. sometimes you know sometimes you don't sometimes you're high sometimes you're low you just mm. never know yeah and I'm so, I mean, I don't know if you want to share any of yours. <laughs> Is that too, 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 um, too deep? No, like I can't really think. Like, like I some, said, I've blocked so many things out. And Okay, so here's an example. Then I had another friend that was on the show as well. Mm. We also spoke about him growing up and having both of his parents not there and mm. being raised by his grandmother mm. and like what it was like for him. Mm. So now, even in his 30s, he feels very untrusting of a lot mm. of people because he never had a solid person yeah. or a mother and father like all of his friends did. Yeah. And that, I mean, that uh, for now, that's kind of shaped yeah. the type of person he is. No. Then he's like, you know, this is why I'm like this. And I definitely can relate to that because if I think about it, right, like um, I think my parents got divorced when I was like 10 years old. Did you have a relationship with both of them, by the I way? Did, I did, I did. Okay. I still do. I love my dad. I love my mom. Mm. It wasn't always easy with my mom and I, like every young teenager yes. and their parents. It was crazy. But also like at the time, obviously my dad wasn't in the picture anymore. And then my mom, I also felt like she wasn't 
emotionally available and there for me. So, so I felt like I could never build a relationship with her until I went through something very recently. I also went through a heartbreak like a couple of years ago. Okay. And I could understand that I didn't even have the capacity to like just be normal on a day to day yeah. basis. And because of that experience I went through, I all of a sudden understood why my mom she was couldn't the way she was, be yes. the way she wanted to maybe be because literally you, you don't have... You're working through your own things at exactly. the time or in fact it's like being shocked. Like And as a child you don't understand that. You're yes. too young to understand and um, obviously uh, because of that I've become very independent maybe even hyper de- independent yes. you know what I mean so um, my outlook on love also is different because I didn't have that model in the home that's exactly my follow up question I yeah. mean you, you find now that I mean your let's say your 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 measuring stick for the mm. type of man mm. or person you want in your life uh, is slightly skewed as to what you feel like you want, what's necessary for you. No, for sure. I think my standards were very, very high in okay. the past, always because I, I, I wanted to guard myself from getting hurt. Yes. So um, I would have these crazy standards that just wasn't measurable. You know what I mean? Yes. And just wasn't realistic. I think I've changed now. My standards are different and are more realistic and I know what I want. But back then, I think I was very difficult. Yes. And it was difficult for me to get into relationships because I, my guards were up and like I couldn't trust anybody easily. So I would always have this like long period where I would have to get to know someone like years before yes. I can get into a relationship with you because I want to see if you're going to disappoint me or let me down because I've been disappointed in before, the past. Yeah. No, I know, but you know what? I, this is, this, I think this is like a, not even a, a common thing. Like I think lots of people could obviously mm. relate to that because the thing is, do you really smack to put yourself in something and be like, exactly. oh, did, I, did I really go waste now? I'm, I'm at life, that age. You know I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm at that age, maybe. I don't want drama. I'm a drama-free person. Yes. And if I can make my life easier, I'm going to do what it takes to make my life easier. And that's exactly the questions I always ask myself. Do I want to go through this? Do I want to get hurt again? But that's also a very skewed yes, outlook because, because things, who's to say that this new experience is not going to be the best the thing best that has one, ever yeah. happened to you? And if you kind of measure it on the same things that you've been through and how do you ever give Your it the opportunity to be like, to flatten. You know, this Absolutely. is the kind of traumas I'm talking yeah. about. You know, like, like, how do you get into a relationship fully and open and you're like, you know what, I'm going to love yeah. and I'm really going to fully love. Absolutely. And the poor part of me is like, you know, I still have to keep a small wall <laughs> just yeah, to yeah, yeah. me, you know? I think it's really up to the person to, to do the work, man. Like, you have to decide... I want to be better and I want to be the best version of me. And that's sort of the season I'm entering into where I'm doing things differently. You know what I mean? I'm not doing things the way I used to do it. And I want to open myself up to be a beautiful person and to be like the best person I can be in a relationship setting. So whoever comes into my life in future, I now know how to handle this person, not to handle them in the same way I used to do it in the past. past. Okay, I got you. Talk about that. Do you have anyone in your life right now? So currently there is someone that I am seeing. It's it's that it's that stage okay, where I'm so getting so to know them. Okay. You say scenes are we, are we in the first few weeks or months? We in the first few months. Okay, first few so, months. Yeah, okay. first few months of getting to know them. And like this person has showed me like very much green flags in a sense of something okay. I've never experienced before. And like my tendency is to want to self-sabotage and to want to push you away and put my walls up to because, see, yes. because I'm scared of getting hurt. But I'm forcing myself to go through the process and to open myself up and to try and just see where things go because it's part of my healing journey as well 100%. as I'm endeavoring in this new new season of my life. Like so like because like how do you how do you completely love, right? Without having that just that mini fear. Sure. I, I think like it's that. I think it's impossible. I think the fear is always gonna be there, but it's up to you to take and then that step. Uh, this is a conversation we even had on love, you know. It's like you have to be willing to put in, to make yourself vulnerable. Yo, and it's difficult, eh? With with um, past like us. With, you understand? So I'm like, you know what? This stuff never works in the end. Just <laughs> now, uh, uh, wait. Exactly. I've you know, seen how it ends, I've and now, uh, like, so this like, ain't for me. So no. is, it, is it is it is it me or is it the world? Uh, <laughs> you you get worried sometimes. Like I want it's to true. be all in, but I'm not sure. You know. It's true. No, yeah. you're so right. But so now that's good. So I mean, it's been going. As so far, it's been going good. We're not going to like label. No, no, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you know, we don't like to put a label yes, on yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. No, it's been, it's been really such a blessing to me because mm. it's opened my eyes to just a new way of doing things. Like, I feel so secure. I feel so safe. I feel so well taken care of. I feel like I'm being treated like a literal princess. Okay. You know what I mean? So... There is nothing that I can sort of do, even if I try to self-sabotage, that I have to question myself. Because there are moments I want to pull back because yes. of that fear and I'm just scared. I'm just like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work out in the long run. But then I look at the situation and I'm like, 
There's absolutely nothing no, wrong with for the me situation. To, okay. Yeah, I can't fault it right now. So what am I doing? Okay, we want his name, sir. Oh and, my and gosh! And, a and his check and his WhatsApp number. Mm-hmm. You the, know you are. Uh, so yeah, we want it. Oh I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Damn! You, and have, you, have you have you been public about it, or is it is it something that's still a bit low key? It's still a bit low key. Yes. Um, because I'm a very private person. Okay. So I don't also intend to take it out to social media. Yeah, yeah, for I sure. I believe that social media has its place for certain things, mm. and I think um, when there's a ring on it, that's when it will. Be that's public. when it come out. So I'm the type of person that's private until. Permanent. Hundred yeah. percent. You know what? And and I mean, lots of people are not going to talk about this, but yeah. uh, something I that I feel should be talked about. You know, in, especially when people are in relationships yeah. today, with it's like you know, it's girlfriend, boyfriend mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I think that posting about it does give a different kind of energy because You're you know right. how other people are about. Mm. You know, when they just see okay, those people look happy. Mm. We are just gonna try to fuck it up. You right? Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like. Because it looks so liquor and you like, you know what, my man does this <laughs> and he's everything. And then someone's there thinks, I think I should take this man. Le- oh my gosh. Or, yeah, or I should test the water with this man. Yeah, see, yeah, he, I he, hate he, that. No, but the thing is, I know what happens. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've that's seen true. it though, over and over again. Like, they're happy, they're liquor. That's and then true. You get that and you say, oh, you must in love now. What? <sighs> People just be licking and just be happy for people. Yeah. Don't mess in other people's porches, man. Like that's but now I thing. feel like putting the porch out there is, is yeah, for people. Exactly. To but also also I've heard this and you can confirm with yes. me. I don't know. Do men feel like not being posted is like not a good thing because they, them, want yes, feed, they, they want to. Yes, they want. So it's a real thing. Yes, they want to be on your your social See, media look, page. Okay, depends, depends what 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 is also I guess means okay. different personality traits or so. True. Because some people would be like, no, it's fine, keep it low key. I like actually like it like mm. this is better for us both. Other people like you are like. But some people wanted to be part of the also like they want the other men to know maybe yes, that this is, is my goal this and, my goal and yeah, I'm, your, yeah, I'm so, the one. Depends. Okay, interesting. It depends. Depends. You know. know Okay, so and now with the, with the, with this relationship, do you have enough time with regards to everything that you're actually doing still? I do have enough time. Look, because acting is not like a nine to five. It's not yes. like you are like working all the time. So you work for three months and then you'll have a break for one month or two months and doing auditions and things. And also you're not filming every single day. You know what I mean? Mm. So you're filming junk hours, yeah, but it's not every single day. So there is definitely time to make things happen and make it work and to just be there for one mm. another. Yeah. Do you ever feel yourself getting into a role of, of producing or directing on yourself for yourself? I don't think so. That has been a question that has been asked. Um, I, I don't think that's me. I think I'm purely just a creative in a sense of having that outlet to express myself, whether yes. it be on the theater stage or on film. Yeah. No, because I, the, the, I guess the reason I asked for that is like, do you feel like there's any roles or characters that you'd still like to play that you haven't played or like kind of like willing to go into like uncharted territory when yeah. it comes to acting like, you know what? We need you to be a police officer. We need you to be a lawyer in this. Like, I are, would you, love are you ready it. to do like all of those course. different roles? Oh, look, there was actually an audition that I got recently that was for like a detective sort of role. Yes. And I would have taken it, but there were certain things that they wanted that just uh, didn't align with like my morals and my values. Okay, that please I tell us. Turn, like, um, <laughs> um, I'm not, I don't want to do like nude, nude scenes or okay, like nude scenes and things like that. I'm uncomfortable with that you know what I mean so I'm never because of my morals and my values I just feel that that doesn't align with me and so I shouldn't force for something that isn't me so yes. I'm always going to take on the roles that I'm fully comfortable with and that I can fully like back and stand behind so no. although it was a detective at all I want to so badly do action things and like cool things like that with like weapons and things but if it doesn't line up with my values, I'm not going to do it. Talking about that, like, I don't know exactly how the South African industry works when yeah. it comes to, like, let's say, naked scenes yeah. or nude scenes like that. Do you get paid more to, to, to do that kind of thing or is it just part of your job? Look, it's part of your job, eh? It's yes. something that is discussed, so like, like, beforehand. Um, as soon as the edition piece comes out already, then it's, it's stated in the edition piece and then it's also a discussion that you must have with the director prior to that. Okay, so, so it's like, are you fine with this? Exactly, like or what, what would you allow? What is like, um, just like a solid no kind of thing? So, yeah, um, I mean, the rate is the same. So you need to okay. be willing to, or you can be one of those actresses that says, you know, I'm not showing my body unless you like up this price by this much. No, because I know, I mean, internationally, let's say mm. we're we going to Hollywood, so like, I've read many mm. pieces on it that if they do show mm. more skin, they do get more money. Yeah, I mean, it is a real thing. But yeah, in South Africa, you can't really get it right because our budgets, maybe. This is the budget. Uh, this is the budget <laughs> and you need to like work within the budget. Unfortunately, that's just the South African. So standard. I've asked every single person who's into acting on this mm. on this thing the same thing. Do you think um, 
acting is a viable option for to live a sustainable life? Like, yo, um, you know what? Initially, it isn't in like the first. Uh, it also depends. Yes, you know it also what depends. I mean? It really depends on the situation. But in the first like five to ten years of hustling, mm. it really isn't. Like you need to look at other options. Um, but like once you do create a name for yourself, it can become a viable option. Mm. But um, that's not to say that it's easy because there are going to be months where you don't book. have any work. Yeah. And then you have to really work very wisely financially. I always have to say actors have to be so financially wise because yeah. there are going to be lots of that. Look at COVID. Like what if something what like that happens? Now? Exactly. So there was no filming happening during COVID. Nothing. So not, no work was happening. One, okay, I can't say actually. No, I'm talking nonsense because one of the seasons of Blood and Water we did actually do during COVID. I think it was season two. It was like full on COVID time. Full on COVID time, but it was very odd. We had to be taken away and like secluded, and like we we each had to be put up in like apartments and things, and we couldn't have contact with one another. And then there would okay. be COVID tests constantly. It was just a very so weird. So you had to do jabs and all your stuff. N- yeah, yeah, like just everything, and then okay. like. Weekly, we would almost need to do these COVID tests, and you know that stuff up your nose. Maybe Yo. I couldn't take it honestly. I saw. I mean, I, saw it, so I didn't do it. I saw them do it to someone else. Yeah. yeah. Nah, it, you've never had one done. Poking, that was the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, oh, horrible. No, that's I would freak out every time. But yeah, so we were filming like solid during COVID time, and then just. Uh, it was weird because we were separated and then we would have holding areas yeah. we would need to be on our own and it, the dynamic was just was a, okay, awkward. I mean, so, I mean, obviously going back to it, like, so now people, obviously if you're a bigger name, I guess yeah. it's a bit different if you like, now okay, you're all for the next two yeah. years, I have this role, yeah. this role, this role, then you're kind of, okay. You, but you're secure. But my, 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 I still think my message is more to like say younger, up and coming mm, people mm, that want to get into mm. it for the first time, yeah. shouldn't have this like, Crazy assumption that you know I'm gonna do my first mm. movie and I'm balling. You know no, what I mean? No, bro, that's not how it works. Yes. Okay? Honestly, I always say that acting is a passion project. No, like mm. anything in the creative field is a passion project. And I feel like just it's just because of Cape Town or South Africa that you we have to say that. that. Uh, it's true. Because though. we're like, yo, you know, it's passion, it's passion. Because I mean, it's if you true. had been living in California, if you had been living, it would have been a different situation. You would have been like, bro, I'm we really, we, we really out here I'm like making, that. Making like making the paper, you know, you know what I mean? I'm doing the things, yeah. but like, yeah. You can't really be like a freelancer. Like, if you want to do acting, I think like soapies is the way to go. If you okay. want something That's sustainable, consistent work, yes, yeah, because you you have a monthly income. You know what I mean? If it's anything else like a series or film yeah. or something, it's really not sustainable. It's very very difficult um, unless you go into like other nuances like theater as well or commercials or photo shoots or campaigns because yeah. of now your your name and everything. Like obviously like getting into this and actually start and well, making a comfortable living yeah. of it. So I mean obviously varies from time to time. Mm. And and I say this because I've spoken to a number again of actors and yeah. it's people that are like like revered people, like people like exactly. no, this, this, like, like when well, I'm sitting no. in, like I'm like no man like Yeah. You'd be like, obviously, no, you, you you sorted for life. And like, you're good. in the industry as well. Exactly. So, I get to speak to these people all the time. But then mm. I always get the, the backside of the mm. story. I'm like, nah, bro, you know what? My, I actually only got paid this and this. And I'm like, what? Exactly. Yeah. Because <laughs> this, this is, this is, the, this is the, the, the brat to brat conversation. Exactly. Because like, I'm always interested to find out the kind of stuff. So, I also have like a scope of understanding yes. of what's happening. I'm like... Maybe but it's so facts, man. So, Pe- in this movie... People think this. you're bowling. No? Yes. Like, guys, the amount of times I've had people... DM me asking me for like tens of thousands and like hundreds of thousands to help them with their family members going yeah. through this. I'm just like, guys, no. You need to settle like, down, bro. Yo, like, a, like I'm not ready to buy everyone in the family exactly. house just yet. You know? exactly. In fact, I'm still trying to pay my one. One window. day, <laughs> one day when I'm big. So, oh, but yeah. one day when I'm big, do you think kids is ever on the agenda for you? Kids, yo, you asking a very interesting question. Did someone put you up to no, us? I didn't. Oh, I, I got this. I'm just since you Okay, said. why are you asking that? Cause I'm interested oh, to know. Okay, cool. <laughs> you 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 did say you're 32. I'm I know. I'm not that people who's gonna be yeah. like, oh, you're getting old no, now. No, no, no. Look, that's age not me. Is nothing to that's me. That's thing. I just wanna know for you. Mm. I feel like uh, some just uh, just straight up on some women say, you know, yeah, I don't wanna have children, yeah. and I'm comfortable not yeah. having children, and which is fine. If that's so what like. that that was my sort of um, outlook for a very long time. Yeah. I wasn't comfortable with having children. I'm still not right now. Okay. I was always like. I'm the type of person that you can give me your child for 10 minutes. I love that child. And Everyone's ready to be the auntie. To yeah, I'm always ready to be the auntie. But yeah. when it comes to my own kids, I'm not sure that I'm ready for that. I'm not even sure that my lifestyle would be allow able for you to, to be allow that. Yes. for me to have children. 
But also, um, it also depends on the man I end up with at the end of the day. Okay. If he really wants kids and like we have a good support system and, you mm. know, we're financially stable and things are just aligned that way, then I would definitely consider it. You know, mm. it's not like a, an absolute no. At the moment, it's a no. But, but yes. who's to say what the future like the holds? Future. Well, since we're talking about children, this mm. is now something, this is, uh, this is like some recent news. Uh, well, I hope this episode yeah. comes out very soon, so this is still very rel- yeah. uh, relevant. You saw the Jocelyn Smith story. You wore my heart. What are your views on a, like, now that's a, that's a mother? Yeah. That ended up selling a child. Yeah. How do you take that as a, I'm just a general watcher of something like this? What is your, like your first? Oh, my word. Look, it's very, very sad. Eh? I actually, I, I saw an interesting thing on um, social media actually last night where someone sort of put it up next to the narrative of, here's a mother that sold a kid, she's put in jail. Yes. What about moms uh, like an abortions that mm-hmm. kill their kids? You yes. know what I mean? Why are they not like dealt with the same consequences? So it's just a very interesting um, sort of a parallel uh, story to put up against each other. And I was just thinking about that. And I was just like, that's okay. Mm. That's a different way to look at things. But um, me in my natural sense, just like looking at saw, it yeah. firsthand, it's very, very heartbreaking because like, I can't understand how a mother would be able to do that. She has other kids as well. You yes. know what I mean? So um, I, I don't, well, look, she's also like a drug user. So yeah. you also don't understand the state that these people why, are in. Why she's doing what the she's circumstances. doing. The yes, circumstances. I'm not condoning it or allowing it, but mm. sometimes you don't also understand the circumstances and why things were done or whatever. But um, I personally can't understand it because mm. I just, I don't know and she's a beautiful little girl and yes. it's like how does a mom or get to that point where she's able to do that without feeling you know what I mean any sort of way because even in her interviews she like had no remorse and, no. I, and I even saw the pre the pre-cut videos where, I mean she was like crying the hardest you know that, sure. and then it's like but you knew this whole time you knew time. the so whole now, time so now it's like the whole narrative's changed yeah. like it went from a sad mother going through all of this stuff into but also the fact that like <laughs> yeah. initially she was like I know my daughter's alive like, yeah. how did you know obviously okay now we know how you knew because yes. you actually sold her and then she started talking about her beautiful eyes she has such beautiful eyes like why would a mom in that state talk about that you know about what I eyes, mean yeah, yeah uh, when safety, you when she's, uh, yeah, well, she comes home and you know exactly and just like I don't understand it you know like I don't know why like the world just become a crazy place to me talk about that I mean you love you've lived in Cape Town South Africa your whole life is, yes. is, it, is it the place that you'd ever move from if you had the opportunity to? Um, this is a question that I've had to think of in the past. Um, I don't think I would ever move from Cape Town. I love Cape Town. It's a beautiful city. But I love my city Ooh, too. It's the best, There's honestly. Like it. Look, like, I mean, I've, I've, traveled, I've traveled a lot yeah. enough to know, but home is home. Man. That's true. And everyone always says that when they when they immigrate. Your home is home, bro. Yeah. So I would love to book like long contracts and okay. then they can fly me over to the States or to the UK or wherever I need to be. So that I'm more than willing to do and then fly back here and come back home to is my home. Gonna be home. Yeah. And I don't know if you see the influx, the big influx of, of, of let's say, um, European and American tourists in South Africa right now they love it more than we love it now they're exactly. like exactly I have so many of them, they don't want to go home oh. like I met so many I can understand so, why because then I asked them if we, if we compare if we compare you know the states uh, to I mean to Cape Town yeah. I'm from Cape Town you know Cape Townians think they love like yeah. on this whole yeah. country on the yeah. <laughs> like we part of African continent but in actually, South Africa, yeah. but actually Cape Town this one, is mm, just alone here. On our own, we yeah. tropical. I'm with you. So I'm like, how do you feel about Cape Town versus something they're like, yo, you know what? They visited about maybe 40 of their own states because mm. America has what? So 52 states. Yeah. They've been to all their states and they feel like Cape Town has a little bit of every one of those wow. states in it. So and this is how they kind of always tell it to me like, because you can have the metropolitan area, then you have the beach, and then you have the mountains, and then we have the farm. I think we're so, the, we're so used we're to so it, man. That, yeah. yeah. We don't appreciate as much, you know what I mean, yes. as outsiders do, because like we just, we see it every day, right? and it's, it's become a norm to us. So, of course, um, international people would just be like, damn, you don't understand, you don't understand. the beauty of the city. And also then, again, people that we have traveled or have been outside, you, obviously when you watch, because we've been so bombarded with, this a Western culture. Yes. So we watch sure. movies, you know, you want to you see the Yellow Cab, mm. you want to see mm. Madison Square Garden, mm. Empire State Building, there's a lot mm. of American movies in the early days. Yeah. 
even then, like the people there, like it's not actually what you think it is when the movies is like it's That's so true. dirty, it stinks That's here. True. Like I'm just saying, yeah, like, you're right. That you don't know, like like um, cities and places that are so romanticized, like Italy and like France, for instance, with Paris. Like now TikTok also, eh? It shows you like the real raw the actual life. Street. Yes, so like people would like form places in Paris, um, and then they'd be like, um, this is this is what you see, Eiffel Tower, and then they go to like the full fit in the city and all of a sudden I because I've always wanted to go to Paris yes. I've never been and then I saw that and I was like no man like this is not what I envisioned we at all we just had a, we had an interview I'm going to tell you just who's on but anyways and then this uh, well the, the woman that was on the episode yeah. and she's like you know what Paris actually stinks oh my no? <laughs> I've heard that they're like you have no idea that the place the, the place in itself doesn't smell oh good at all days. and it's very dirty and there's lots of things and so that now say, yeah. Paris is not even on my list anymore because I'm just like put off completely look we must not go see ourselves <laughs> yeah 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 oh, that's true yeah but make I up mean, your own opinion I think for I think for Cape Town when, when we see it's beauty it really is beautiful it is yes we definitely have mm. ghettos mm, of course and we definitely have evil stuff is happening here as yeah. does the other you know but international places in even place yeah. but I mean it's a very 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 beautiful city yeah. Um, if It'll you, always be home. <laughs> if you could, uh, if someone, if the guys, this is a question I've asked many people again. Mm. If you had the opportunity to say, listen, Michaela, you are ready to go to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. You're going to become one of the biggest stars. You're going to get your Hollywood Hall of Fame star. You're going to be that girl. We're going to put you yeah. all the big, the big movies, big series. You're going to be that person. But you have to say goodbye to all your family and friends in Cape Town. You are never able to see them again. So when I say sacrifice, I mean like you have to sacrifice your relationships with all of them like to like, be able to see them again. W- what level is that? Like you have to just, you can't come back or you, you have to can't cut come, them off? You can't come back and um, look, you might be able to talk to them online, but you can't ever see them again. So would you now, so the question is, would you go and become that huge, oh huge gosh. star or would you stay and never reach that level of success? Wow. Is it a given that you stay and you never reach the, that level? No, it's a like given. It's, like, it's a given. Uh, it's like you, uh, you, the, you're going to reach the... the mm. Once you reach the ceiling for Cape Town or let's say Af- the African continent, that's as far as it goes, but it's never going to be... I think it, it depends on the person and um, their family dynamic. Because what if you aren't that close with your family? You no, know what I mean? But, but that's just that my question to yeah. you. So you but we're referring to me. No, yes. I think um, the type of person that I am, I've never wanted to become like this crazy star. Um, I, I also can't deal with like too much like people. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I get like anxious in big spaces with a lot of people. So I've never ever wanted to reach that level of stardom where um, I'm not accessible anymore. Okay. You know what I mean? So I think I would turn it down. You turn it down? Um, yeah, because I've always just wanted to be a working actress and that's what I am and I'm content and I'm happy doing what I'm doing and I have a good support system at home and I don't think I would be able to flourish over there without the people that have journeyed with me here. What a wholesome answer. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you. That's like so awesome. <laughs> now, again, I said lots. Of, I've asked this question to many people, and I'm like, and I ask them, so mm. you do it, and then they say straight up, yeah, yeah. yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> if you gotta, I gotta go, you go, I gotta go. go. Yeah. Okay, I got a couple of would you rather questions right now. So if you had to, if you had to choose, would you rather have permanent clown makeup or permanent bed hair? Permanent bed hair. So you go give us the reason for that one. Because um, I have curly hair and I wake up and my hair is boost anyway. And okay. curly hair is kind of boost in a sense. And pity I can just like tie my up and do like a and messy band and I'm okay. like Next one. Game. Would you rather always have to speak in rhymes or sing everything you say? Sing everything I say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Would you rather smell like rotten eggs all the time or constantly have the sound of a high-pitched squeaky toy whenever you move? Oh my word, I have the sound of a high-pitched squeaky toy. Rotten eggs? Yes, every time you move. Yo, guy, but rotten eggs, nah, fam. Okay, um, would you rather eat a bowl of live cockroaches or a plate of maggots for every meal? Do I have to? Do I have, have to? have to choose one as cockalack of maggots. Oh, what one you chowing? Uh, I have a fear of cockroaches, so it's going to have to be the maggots. Maggots. <laughs> <laughs> Is in anything that you um anything that you scared of anything that you like I mean like fears yes the, well cockroaches is one of them just bugs in general okay you like scared of bugs butterf- butterflies and moths eh like and ladybirds well, like someone told hello someone no. did tell us no are you joking it's funny to hold this <laughs> No, no, no. Is he lying? Just hold it. No, I can't. You have to. You have to. This is a cockroach. (laughs) 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 (laughs
Did Kelly die? We just have to see if you're really scared no, of it. Of course. I know lots of people that are scared of cockroaches, by the way. What, 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 what's the reason for that? Because you do know the stuff you can just tramp on and they freak, right? I, I understand that, but my bro, those things fly at you. It's the I flying know, but ones. You can them still. But there is a reason because once, okay, uh-huh. when I was very young, I was a flower girl at like my parents' best friend's wedding. Yes. And um, I had to walk down the aisle and it was in this field, right? Okay. It was like, like fields around us and I had this like dress white dress with so much tulle and these bugs and things well, got, got in stuck there. in there <laughs> and no one could help me and I was I was traumatized because I was uh, um, walking down the aisle but I was walking down with tears in my face because no one could see that I was dealing with these things like just crawling and creeping up and some got like under the dress and Yo. so that's actually probably like a deep seated so trauma you'd, prob- you'd probably be a Poor fear factor contest, No, eh? I would never make it. I wouldn't make <laughs> past the first round. Terrible. Okay. That's like a last, the last two okay, for you because cool. we've got a guy here. Would you rather be able to teleport anywhere or be able to read minds but only standing on one foot? What? So, we have the ability to speak and understand every single language, right? Yeah. Or be able to, uh, let's say... Wait, no. Re- no, you said teleport anywhere. Okay, wait, 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 okay yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Would you rather be able to teleport anywhere or be able to read minds but you, can, but you only have to, stand, you have to stand on one foot to read those minds? Um, I teleport anyway, but I don't care to read your mind. I want to be okay. in Greece and like Rome and everywhere without having to pay. Are well, you mad? I can go on holiday any day of my life. I actually told someone this this weekend <laughs> as well. That they, they, they wanted me to go with them like on this long uh, trip somewhere. Mm. And it's like, sometimes I like long journey trips, yeah. but sometimes I just don't smack the drive. Yeah. Or you know flights as well. Yeah, it's you crazy. You know I don't know if Tiring. I don't know if your if your bum has ever gotten like a little bit of a I'm telling you. Now like for me, that's, and that's, that's the worst, bro. So yeah. now I was like, I wish to go, I wish to go all those places, but couldn't we just like instantly, just instantly teleport? Bro. I was like talking about Dragon Ball Z. Do you know Dragon Ball yeah, Z? Yeah, of course I know. It? Of course. Remember I grew you up. could you know instant I grew transmission? Up it, yes. Oh my, oh, my days. days. Okay, R.I.P. Akira Toriyama, by the way. Oh, yes, I don't know if you saw it. Yes, I saw R.I.P. R.I.P. Listen, um, last two questions we go. Um, would you rather have the ability to time travel? But only to the past, or have the ability to freeze time but age twice as fast while time is frozen? Age twice as fast? Yes. So you can, um, either go, you can time I'll travel. I'll time travel backwards, bruh. Um, How far are you going back? Um, yo, I think 20 odd years to see what happened in my childhood. Okay. And to, to be able to relive it and deal with it in the best way that I possibly can. Because, like I said, because of the traumas, like you block out everything. Yes. You know what I mean? So I would definitely go back 20 odd years and like really see things from an adult, adult perspective. perspective. 100%. Yeah, that's what I would do. Final words, anything you want to share with South Africa before we go? I want to say thank you for your time. I would like thank to keep you. us going. But you need <laughs> yeah, to go. I have yeah. places to go, people so, to see. A couple of movies to do. <laughs> Tell the people no, what you want to say. Thank you so much for all your love and support. I really appreciate you. And you guys have been amazing on my journey so mm. far. So, yeah, mm. much love. Cocaine with threesome. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Damn. Yes, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, salute, guys. Back with another public service announcement. Back with another public service announcement. Back with another public service announcement. Hey! Hi, gentlemen. I hope you guys are feeling good this morning.